During the last few years, both as part of my job as a hospitality entrepreneur and writer, and also as an avid traveler, I visited 22 capitals in Europe, not counting microstates like the Vatican City. Beauty is a combination of qualities that please the aesthetic senses. What may be subjective is what each person finds pleasing to their sense of beauty. I once met a guy who considered that black fabric for furniture was better than Gobelin or Chacois. He said he was minimalist, and that's why he preferred plain to black. Later on, he revealed that it was not the black that was more beautiful for him, but he preferred it since it was more difficult to spot stains when it got dirty. So in this list, you can expect cities that pleases the senses. At least they pleased mine and all my companies when we visited them. I'm also not evaluating anything else other than aesthetic criteria. Some of the cities with low scores fare remarkably well in other things like history filled Bucharest. And each city is rated from 0 to 10. This may be cruel, and if one has any point to make, feel free to do so in the comment section. So let's start with the least beautiful European capital that I have been, Berlin in Germany. And from 0 to 10 I give Berlin a 3. Because Berlin is... ugly. Yes, it has an interesting past, every district is full of history, and it's a great place to party if you like electronic music, like I do. But it is ridiculously ugly. Let's start with the bizarre TV tower that just looked like a giant toothpick, to not say worse. Then we see dozens of construction sites and graffiti covered walls with unexplained characters that try to be edgy but are just an eyesore. The former communist part still looks like a desolate concrete jungle, and there is a complete lack of harmony with the still existent historical buildings. Ugh. So yeah, Berlin is not the most beautiful city in Europe or Germany. Munich is way more alluring. I dare to say that Berlin is not even the most beautiful city in Berlin. The next is Tirana, Albania. For then I give a 4.5. And the reason is the excessive amount of brutalist architecture. Still, this nation has some lovely cities like Škoda, and the people I met there are remarkably friendly. In the next place comes Bucharest, in Romania, and for Bucharest they give a 5. When I visited Bucharest, the tour guide started with this short explanation. The city used it to be beautiful. However, in the 70s there was an earthquake, large parts of the city were destroyed, and the communist dictator who ruled the country decided to rebuild it according to his own taste. The dictator, Ceausescu, apparently had a particular taste for urban landscaping. The city has large avenues and is relatively well planned, but sadly, concretism and brutalism are everywhere. In the next two places we have Podgorica in Montenegro and Sofia in Bulgaria. And for them we give a rating of 5.5. Both cities have a similar past, communism. In almost all former communist countries, and for some reason in Brazil, public buildings and urban planning follow a school of architecture called brutalism. This indicates that the function of the building takes precedence over its aesthetics. In the 16th place, Moscow in Russia and Bratislava in Slovakia, and both receive each a 6. Moscow and Bratislava also share a common point. Both are aesthetically outclassed by their former sister cities. St. Petersburg, the Russian capital until the Bolshevik Revolution, and Prague, the capital of Czechoslovakia, the country where Bratislava belonged until 1992, are way more attractive. It's not that both don't have beautiful parts, but they are just small parts drowning in a much larger brutalist setting that reminds me cliches about Eastern Europe, although Bratislava is technically in Central Europe. In the fourth place, Warsaw in Poland and Belgrade in Serbia, with a 6.5. Warsaw has a lovely old town, except that it's not really old, but a reconstruction of the former old town that was completely destroyed during World War II. Belgrade is more or less the same. Starygrad is pretty charming, and the street sellers of Rakia during the evenings make it even better. Outside the old parts, there are ordinary cities with traffic jams and some cringy postmodernist buildings, like the recently built and pathetic looking Warsaw Museum of Modern Art. In the next place, we have London with a 6.75. 
From one side, London had splendid buildings like the Buckingham Palace, Tower Bridge and Big Bang. But at the same time, London is a noisy modern city, quite crowded, and has monstrosities like the Shard, a giant glass pencil that got stuck in the ground and forgot to sharpen its point. Or the Trellick Tower, despite the fact that England was never under communist rule, somehow they managed to build a brutalist monster that could come from the darkest corners of the Soviet Union. In the 11th place is Dublin and Athens, both with a 7. Dublin has numerous examples of Georgian architecture that are very well preserved, as well as cobblestone streets that transport you back in time. Athens could be much higher, but apparently years of economic turmoil have taken a heavy toll on the city. Outside the most famous districts, like Plaka, many places look run down. Before I begin the top 10, I would like to ask a small favor. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. In the ninth place, Budapest in Hungary and Vilnius in Lithuania, with a 7.5 each. Budapest has a splendid mix of neoclassical, gothic and baroque architecture, bringing from one side a Habsburg flair influenced by oriental scents, like in the thermal baths. Vilnius is a hidden gem in the Baltics, a city that I visited almost by accident and loved it. It's an underdog on almost any tourist route, and for this reason, it's also one of the most surprising little capitals you can visit. In 7th, Prague, in Czech Republic, and Lisbon, in Portugal, both with an 8. Prague was some of a disappointment for many reasons for me, from the scammers and excessive numbers of tourist traps to some attractions trying to rip you off all the time. But one cannot deny how charming the city is. Lisbon, on the other side, didn't disappoint me, but the opposite. I didn't have high expectations and it surprised me positively with its colorful buildings, well-preserved monuments, the feeling of safety and harmonic urban arrangement. And we are getting closer to the top, in 50 Paris, in France and Copenhagen in Denmark, both with an 8.5. Once on a social media network, someone asked me what was the most beautiful city in Europe. Paris? Or the city that actually tops our list and we will review soon. I say that Paris couldn't compare to the city, even though the French capital does have a lot of beautiful buildings, streets and parks. Unfortunately, Paris is slowly creeping into certain hypes of questionable taste. One of these hypes was the so-called high-tech architecture, and the ugly fruit of this in Paris was the Centre Georges Pompidou. It was supposed to look modern, and maybe it looked like that when it was built in the 70s. Nowadays it's kitsch and completely out of place. Copenhagen, on the other hand, may not have the same heritage or architectural richness as larger European cities, and neither boulevards like Paris. But it's a capital city with the feeling of a smaller, regional town where you can go by bicycle everywhere. Now the podium, the third most beautiful capital city in Europe, Valletta, Malta, with a 9. Valletta brought me back in time and I fell in love with the city as a shipwrecked sailor would in the 16th century. The palaces, alleys, piers, and all other man-made wonders are in perfect fusion between your rich history, the privileged natural landscape, the Mediterranean Sea, and the carved coast. Now time for the two most beautiful capitals in Europe, where maybe we have a surprise. More than once I have been asked what the most beautiful city I have ever visited is. My answer is always the same, Rome and Vienna. They are truly different cities, and both are majestic in their own way. Rome, the eternal city, is the triumph of the human will and of the aspirations that nourish and move our spirit. Many of Rome's details from a distance look just like marble and stone, but the grandeur of the whole is breathtaking. And this grandeur crosses millennia, from the Castel Sant'Angelo built over the foundations of the Mausoleum of Hadrian, a construction of almost 2000 years, or modern buildings like the Altar della Patria, a monument finished at the beginning of the 20th century. On the other side, Vienna is a hymn to man's ability to create beauty in every inch, word, brushstroke and musical note. Vienna is the beauty of details and of good taste. A refined beauty, baroque rococo, that brings a bit of the divine even in the most trivial constructions. The Habsburgs and their architects who project the city didn't create buildings only for their functionality. It needed to be breathtaking in every detail, almost as if whoever projected these structures, parks and streets wanted to play a game of how many jaws can we drop in a day at every single building, no matter their purpose. 
That, for example, is their national library. Someone could still say, so what? It's just some nice wooden shelves and a statue. Then I would tell him, look at the ceiling. In the evening, my wife and I decide to have a coffee, a typical Viennese coffee, so we choose a nearby cafe. Then we entered and... It was simply the most spectacular coffee house I have ever been to. The picture doesn't do justice to how sumptuous the interiors look at. And, contrary to general belief, the waiter was friendly and polite. The name of the cafe is Gessner Hofdugebacher. Seeing how the Austrians of the 18th and 19th centuries managed to create building even the most ordinary places, I can understand the effusiveness of one of my favorite composers, the Viennese Johann Strauss II. Every step I walked felt like a note from the Blue Danube. Every corner I turned, it was like a section from the Frühlingstimmen. And that is called perfection. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe to our channel for the next ones.